Here we have a portion of the graph of the function y of x. We want to find the length of this curve from x equals a to x equals b. We take a tiny segment of this curve. The horizontal distance between this point and this point is delta x. The vertical distance between these two points is delta y. So we have this right angle triangle formed here. So we're going to consider the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. So that's the straight line distance between these two points. We know from Pythagoras' theorem that if we have the two short sides, we can get the longest side or the hypotenuse. So we need to square the two short sides, take the sum of the squares, and then take the square root. Obviously the smaller this little segment is, the closer the length of the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle will be to the distance along the curve from this point to this point. We want a distance along the curve. So delta x stands for a small increment in x and delta y is a small increment but we will make them smaller. We will take limits. Now we can rewrite this thing. So what we do is we take what's inside that's delta x squared plus delta y squared and divide it by delta x squared. So divide each of these by delta x squared. But of course if we divide by delta x squared we must compensate by multiplying by delta x squared. Now we get delta x squared over delta x squared that's 1 and here we just have delta y squared over delta x squared and all of this is multiplied by delta x squared but we can take the square root sign over each factor. The square root of delta x squared is obviously delta x and we can write delta y squared over delta x squared as delta y over delta x all squared. Now we can imagine doing this for all little segments from x equals a to x equals b. This is only one particular segment. We've approximated its length by this expression here. So we can imagine doing it for all little segments and then summing them from x equals a to x equals b. Obviously our approximation gets better and better if we make delta x very very small. If delta x gets very small obviously delta y will get smaller and smaller and uh, the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle will get closer and closer to the length of the curve between this point and this point up here. So to make our approximation exact we take the limit as delta x tends towards zero of this sum. We've seen in, in previous videos that when we take the limit of this sum we get an integral delta x becomes dx and sigma from x equals a to x equals b becomes the integral from a to b. Also as delta x goes to zero delta y will go to zero so we replace delta y here with dy. Let's take this example here we want the length of the curve y equals 3x plus 2 between x equals 1 and x equals 5. This is the equation of a straight line so we don't have to use integration to do it but we will use the integration method anyway. So here's a sketch of the line. If x equals naught, y equals 2, so the y-intercept is 2. The slope of this line is 3, so if we increase x by 1, um, y increases by 3, we go up 3. So this is what it looks like. So we want to get the length of it between 1 and 5. Um, I won't draw this to scale, i just show it here. As you see, we can easily get this without doing this integration. We'll do it both ways. So what do we need? Well, we need dy dx. Well, that's straightforward for this function. dy dx is just 3. The slope of the line is 3 everywhere. So we plug 3 in for dy dx. We have to square it. We end up getting root 10 dx. So integrating root 10, that's just a constant. So we get root 10x. Now we can check our answer by just using Pythagoras' theorem. Well the distance from here to here is 4 and the distance from here to here, well that's easy to get. We just need to get the value of the function at x equals 5. So we just plug 5 in here, we get 3 5s are 15 plus 2 is 17, so this is 17. Um, 
what's this here this point here well we plug one in so we get three ones are three plus two is five so this is five the two is actually here of course so we have 17 minus 5 which is 12 so here we get 144 plus 16 that's uh, 160 and uh, that's just root 16 by root 10 which is 4 root 10 next we're going to get the length of the graph of um, the function y equals hyperbolic cos of x between x equals 0 and x equals 2 so we need dy dx that's in the formula the derivative of hyperbolic cos is hyperbolic sine it's similar to the derivative of the trigonometric cos function if this was just cos of x the derivative would be minus sine of x but since it's hyperbolic cos the derivative is plus hyperbolic sine so here's our integrand. We're uh, integrating the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared. Well, that's hyperbolic sine squared. And we're integrating um, with respect to x from 0 to 2. Now, the square root is usually a danger sign, but we can use an identity to greatly simplify this down. So here's the identity. Hyperbolic cos squared minus hyperbolic sine squared equals 1, no matter what x is. So this is similar to the trigonometric form. Cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. We just change the plus to a minus. Um, so you can see now that if we rearrange this that hyperbolic cos squared x is 1 plus hyperbolic sine squared x so we have the square root of hyperbolic cos squared x well that's just hyperbolic cos of x now the integral of hyperbolic cos is hyperbolic sine plug in the limits and we get 3.63 to two decimal places next we want to get the length of the curve y equals x squared between x equals 0 and x equals 3 now the derivative of x squared is dy dx is 2x so um, in our formula we want the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared so we want here we want 1 plus 2x all squared that's 1 plus 4x squared we integrate with respect to x from 0 to 3 now for this type of problem we can make this substitution here because we can uh, simplify this down to a single term okay um, we we want to get 1 plus hyperbolic sine squared of x inside here well actually it'll be 1 plus hyperbolic sine squared of u uh, so to do that we have to let x equal a half hyperbolic sine of u because a half squared is a quarter and four times a quarter gives us one so we want to end up with 1 plus hyperbolic sine squared u so um, we need to cancel that 4 and the only way to do that is to multiply it by a half squared now we also need to sub in for dx well to do that we need to differentiate this function get dx du the derivative of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cos half is just a constant and uh, rearranging then we can get dx so we plug everything in so we see we have half hyperbolic cos u in for dx now we can deal with the square root by using this identity that we've seen already so um, we see hyperbolic cos squared u is what, what must go inside here so you have the square root of hyperbolic cos squared of u that's hyperbolic cos of u and then that's multiplied by another hyperbolic cos term so that's hyperbolic cos squared of u and this half can be taken outside now the limits have been changed here also uh, the upper limit was x equals 3 so we can rearrange this to get um, 6 equals hyperbolic sine of u or u equals inverse hyperbolic sine of 6 when x is 0 um, we end up getting the inverse hyperbolic sine of 0 and that's actually 0 just like the trigonometric sine of 0 is 0 in a similar way for integrating the trigonometric cos squared function we um, uh, write it as this linear form here this form doesn't involve hyperbolic cos squared so we plug that in to get it into this linear form and we take out the half so we quarter out the integral of the hyperbolic cos function is hyperbolic sine and we must divide by the coefficient of u which is 2 so that when we differentiate this by the chain rule the 2's will cancel to give us hyperbolic cos 
integrating one with respect to u gives us u. Then we just plug in and calculate to get the answer.